This is a Hot Pie Media original. I think it's been passed around. I, it's, it's nothing the people that have lived here more than five years didn't know already. But it, it is interesting to watch the national narrative of not, not, no longer the narrative is not Austin is booming. It's quickly becoming, as they pointed out in the New York Times, one of the most expensive cities in the country. I mean, that's a pretty quick turnaround from everyone's moving here because it's less expensive to, oh, wait a second, it's becoming one of the most expensive places. And I asked the billion-dollar question, and that is, so obviously it's getting more expensive, but growth is still happening. So in a, bo- in a good economy, <laughs> that means that the city just becomes more lucrative and high-end. In other words... More, the same number of people are going to keep moving here. They just have a lot more money. I mean, is that, I think that's pretty obvious. So there's the narrative that's not, oh, it's booming. It's booming and it's getting more expensive. That tipping point that we kept talking about, you know, Austinites would say, yeah, sooner or later when it gets to this point and it gets this expensive, then the whole thing is going to turn. It's not turning. It's not turning. That just means richer people are coming. This is a remarkable, so then that means this, I wish them well again. Today, another story, another attempt, another discussion. Sincere as it may be, Austin City Council is meeting again today and discussing ways to make the city more affordable. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um. I don't know. I hate to repeat the same thing for 20 years now, but I think at the end of the meeting, after you have the breakout session and get some uh, bagels and coffee, I think you're going to look at enough charts and go, ah, damn it. Demand is high. Oh, no. I just don't think you can fix that demand thing. Unless we want to start scaring people off. Unless you want to somehow get them to go away and not want to come here. Hmm. I think it's going to take care of itself. But but some stuff has come out. This is a remarkable number. I mean, think about this. This is going back to 2011 in Austin. So the calculation is there are 30, 33,000 fewer homes than the number of jobs created. I mean, yeah, that would make prices go up. But I mean, that, that's remarkable. I mean, think, these are Austin problems, right? The rest of the country is talking about crime and stuff like that. And we're talking about, we have more jobs than homes. We make more jobs, not we. People driving around make more jobs than we have homes. Number of jobs opening up, homes can't keep pace. And I don't even know enough about building houses. I I'm the last person you want involved in that. They're sitting here now saying, and this is kind of an interesting take on it. So now the city is saying, and, and leaders are saying, and, and, and I'm, not, I'm not condemning them for the discussion. Um, it, it is a, it's an Austin problem. We don't have major problems. We have problems like this, and that is, how do we make the place more affordable? It is an everyday, all day, 15 year discussion Today's focus, they're now saying, is we need to build more houses. I don't know how doable that is. I don't know if that's even practical. In other words, they're saying, well, demand is just going to stay up here. Demand is at, what, 180 people a day? Is that right? 180 a day. And for good reason, because number of jobs. I mean, this is a beautiful thing. I mean, we live in a city where you're making jobs, not government's making jobs, not the governor, not the mayor. You're doing it. Smart people are just making jobs. Money is circulating all throughout this city. New ideas all over the place. John McClellan is the co-founder and creator of ATX Hot Sauce in all 50 states, now in several retail outlets as well. So we're going to Turn it over to the social media rock chef superstar, and we're going to walk through a few sauces and why you should buy. We've done beet heat, so we're second in line now for the tasting. Don't forget, everyone, go to atxhotsauce.com. So here we go. All right, so this one is our smoked habanero five pepper. We smoke habaneros with um, ancho, pasilla. Is that going to hurt? 
This one? No, yeah. this one's actually really, really good. Okay. This is like your traditional tapatia, but yeah. uh, without the vinegar in it, right? And because of that fermentation process that yeah. we've talked about all the time. This one is great on sandwiches, pizzas, things like that. Uh, great on hot wings. Uh, I think you're going to really like this okay. one too, especially the smoky flavor with the adobe chipotle and the um, uh, the smoked habaneros. We actually smoked the habaneros um, before we... Uh, Does that go with the cab? This would not go with the cab. This would go with the great <laughs> Chenin Blanc, though. I knew you were going to teed you up with that one. Yeah, yeah. That is good. That's yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. It's just classic yeah. take. Uh, yes. Well, it's a new take on a classic item. Uh -huh. So it's called Smoked Habanero Five Pepper. All right, don't forget one ATX. One of my favorites. Don't forget ATXHotSauce.com. I mean, it's fantastic. But that can't slow down. It's not going to slow down. What are you going to do? Tell everybody, hey, listen, those of you meeting in a coffee shop today, maybe put that idea on hold for a few years. Don't hire anybody for a few years. I mean, we can't stop the amazing machine that is entrepreneurs in this city, smart people in this city, successful companies in this city. We can't stop them. We don't want to stop them. I know the Texas legislature acts like it, but this is the place that's making everything happen. We don't want to stop them, so what do we do about that? They're making more jobs than we're making houses. I don't even know the answer. How practical is it? One, for a city entirely, are you sure you want more houses? Okay. But even if you say our policy now is we want to encourage more building, just throw it up there, get some more stuff going. I don't even know how practical that is right now in the marketplace that we live in, and that is how do you get the stuff? I mean, it seems to me it's pretty hard to get the supply chain is pretty tight right now. I mean, is it practical to just say the, at five o'clock today, the Austin City Council says we want builders to make more? Oh, OK. Um, I, I don't even know. I mean, I'm not saying it's a terrible idea because if supply keeps up with demand, price will will level off. Can you make supply that much more available? Because that's what they're saying. They've given up on, you know, finding ways to, to make it, you know, policy to make it more affordable. That just doesn't exist. So now the focus is on what do we do to create more supply? And I'm not sure the average person driving around that's been here for some time would say, I want more houses. I want more apartment complexes. I want, my God, there's a crane everywhere. <laughs> right? you, it seems to me they're throwing them up pretty quickly. And oh, by the way, they're really expensive. Mm. And they're still selling. So you can, you know, you cut back on zoning rules. I mean, it's a, it's a weird path, this path now to solve this giant Austin problem. You know, what an enviable problem to have. Solve the Austin problem by just cutting back, making it easier to build more. Even then, I don't know if it'd keep up. I mean, that is, I don't know of any other city, I don't know how common that stat is, but I doubt there are many, certainly not in Texas, but I doubt there are many places that have had for almost, what, nine years now, 10 years, more jobs by far than houses created. So you can say, you guys, no more red tape, no more zoning issues, you know, I, I don't know, I mean... Just throw it up wherever. Just get a house out there as fast as possible. Okay. Okay. Um, looks to me like those giant buildings going up downtown everywhere. Looks to me like they're trying. They're moving pretty fast. But that's, that's where it is now. The argument, the political argument, the policy argument has moved from we're going to make it more affordable to we're just going to get out of the way and let people throw up more houses. And more apartments, I guess. And you got 180 people a day, you better move fast, right? The issue is, I think what we're finding out, this is what I think is the, uh, if you want to call it an ugly side of this, it's not just that 180 people are coming a day. I don't even know if it's entirely fair to say we're not building enough housing. What's happening is the 180 people are the 180 that can afford expensive housing. It doesn't feel like the market is about mid-level housing. It feels like the market is that lucrative. And I don't blame them. 
If you throw up a skyscraper and you're selling these, uh, you know, 800 square feet for a million dollars and you sold all 100%, what would you do? From the Hot Pie Media Studios in Austin, Texas, it's the Jeff Ward Show. Listen at jeffwardshow.com.